Good afternoon. This is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. We are going to continue today in Chapter 5, Billy Graham and His Friends, by Dr. Kathy Burns. Bibles for Betrayal In a previous chapter, we took a long look at the Union Theological Seminary, UTS, known as the Red Cemetery, because of its many communistic faculty members. Another person who attended UTS was Bishop K.H. Ting. Bishop Ding, I can't pronounce that Chinese name, is G-U-A-N-G-X-U-N. He is one of the presidents of the World Conference on Religious Peace, which is covered later in this book. He is also the principal of Neijing, or Neijing Theological Seminary, but, like so many others from UTS, he promotes a communistic agenda. Ting's wife declared in the February 23, 1977 issue of Christian Century, We love Chairman Mao Tai's tongue for all he has taught us. She also remarked, as Chinese Christians, we do not see Christianity and socialist China as opposed to each other. It is God working, whether in his name or not. Bishop Ting has also praised Mao Tis Tung and his revolutionaries by referring to them as honest, sincere, good men. He said, quote, Thank God for them, the communists. And we want to learn from them through what they do, unquote. On September 23, 1984, Ting spoke at Rico University. His lecture was then reprinted in the International Bulletin of Missionary Research in July 1985. <clears throat> in reference to to the revolutionaries, he said, they were certainly not the monsters and rascals they were said to be, but quite normal human beings with idealism, serious the theocratical interest, and high ethical commitment, unquote. Under the communist regime in China up to 1971, somewhere between 34 million and 300,000 to 63 million and 780,000 lives were lost. One author wrote, quote, China's communist leader, Mao Tistong, established one of the most brutal dictatorships under the sun. Not only did he take away the basic human liberties of the Chinese people, he was directly responsible for the murders of millions, unquote. Even the Guinness Book of World Records state that the greatest massacre in human history occurred during the rule of Mao Tse-tung between 1949 and 1965. Referring to Mao and his fellow communists, Ting remarks, quote, And although they had no high regard for religion at all, they did not attempt to persecute or liquidate religion either, unquote. Oh, really? Let's look at a few facts. Before the end of the 1950s, the 200 churches in Shanghai were reduced to 23. Peking had only four churches open rather than 65 as in years past. The zealous communists, under the banner of the Three Self Movement, went on to dissolve the Jesus family communities and took over or closed three Catholic universities. 189 secondary schools, 2,011 primary schools, 2,243 prayer schools, involving 30,000 students in all. The Union Theological Seminary in Canton was also closed down. Some have estimated that by 1959, approximately 80% of the churches in China was closed. A former missionary to China, M. E. Lowen, declared that, quote, I know that within a few years of the communist takeover in 1949, nearly three out of the four of all professed Christians abandoned ship. Hundreds of thousands of Christians vanished. 
Most were, were presumed dead. The survivors are underground, unquote. Yet Ting tells us that Mao did not try to liquidate religion in China. Socialism is not a loss of freedom. Hmm. In spite of this inhumane, savage, and ruthless behavior, Ting thinks that these murderers had a high ethical commitment. In fact, quote, Ting described the communist enslavement of China as the people's liberation movement with all its goodness and beauty, unquote. Of course, Ting himself was an adulterer and a murderer, according to the Christian News. In Ting's opening address to the Third Chinese National Christian Conference, he stated, quote, We give thanks to God in our prayers for the achievements of the socialist new China, unquote. He also announced, quote, Socialism seems to me to be a society that organizes people for mutual benefit. It is not a loss of freedom. It is a gain of freedom, unquote. Below are a few more quotations from Ting, taken from statements he made in 1977. Quote, in the, new China, in the new China, the life of the people has improved a great deal. No one needs to worry about starvation, medical help, etc. Unquote. Quote, we returned to China in 1951. People in Europe were very concerned about our coming back. They felt that I would be killed or put in a concentration camp. I am still alive, and I do not believe that there is any such camp. We do not need it. I have been in engaged in religious work all these years. I believe in the honesty of the communists concerning the policy of religious freedom. Unquote. Quote, the missionary movement was part of a system. Missionaries were tool, tools of imperialist aggression. Unquote. Quote, Ting says that it was the Communist Party that had made a correct analysis of the root cause of China's suffering and misery, imperialism and feudalism, unquote. In a speech Ting gave in 1980, he said, New China is the people's China. It exists for the broad masses of the people. It has brought liberation, benefits, and happiness to its people. It is a revolutionary and progressive, uh, unquote. Just recently, he declared that socialism is the best social system which has appeared in human history, unquote. He indicated that any theology and that is incompatible with socialism should not be preached. In 1999, he said that all churches in China should be socialists, unquote. One writer notes, quote, what most people do not realize is that Bishop K. H. Ting was the major Protestant leader who sold out to the communists when they took over China. Ting's sellout was believed responsible for the deaths of many true believers who refused to bow to godless red atheists when they took control of China." Unquote. It has been said, and correctly so, that no other man has as much authority in any other communist country as Ting does in China. In August 29th through September 5th, 1979, Issue of Christian Century was an article about Ting. Quote, the article admits that Ting is a member of the Communist People's Consultative consultative assembly and even concludes by admitting that Ting represents that part of the Christian movement in China that sought modes of accommodation with the government of the People's Republic, Red Government. In spite of this knowledge, the article treats Ting as though he were a true Christian instead of the apostate traitor he really is. Incidentally, Ting was in the USA for the recent World Conference on Religion and Peace, in parentheses, which has nothing to do with true religion or peace, but is a communist front. Um, let's continue. After which he was given a red carpet tour by the National Council of Churches, unquote. Ting has bragged, quote, 
The year 1949 was a special year for China. From one standpoint, the United States lost China in that year, and from another, in that same year, the Chinese people got their liberation. For us, Chinese churches, that liberation marks the beginning of a process in our church known as the Three Self Movement." Unquote. Of course, 1949 was the year that the communists took over China. To Ting, this was a liberation for the Chinese people. But what else can, be, can we expect from a Marxist? Notice also that he said that this liberation was the start of what is now known as the Three Self Movement. Three Self Patriotic Movement. Ting was the head of the Three Self Patriotic Movement, TSPM, from its inception until recently. He is now the honorary chairman. The term three self refers to China's policy for the churches to be self-supporting, self-governing, and self-propagating. In China, the TSPM is the official church and is officially sanctioned by the Chinese communistic government. There are also the unofficial churches not sanctioned by the government, known as the unofficial church, known as the house churches, which are illegal in China. Many pastors who refuse to join the TSPM are either arrested or made fugitives. With China celebrating its 50th anniversary of the communistic rule in 1999, house church Christians face stiff labor camp sentences for meeting in homes and refusing to join the state registered and controlled churches. Church, not churches, church. In spite of these persecutions, there are reasons why the house church Christians do not want to join the TSPM. One writer explains about the TSPM. Quote, <clears throat> excuse me. The Communist Government Organized the Religious Affairs Bureau, RAB, to control religion. In 1951, the Three Self Patriotic Movement, TSPM, was organized under the control of the RAB to direct the affairs of the Protestant churches. All churches were to be brought under the control of the TSPM, and detailed files were kept on all church leaders and their activities. By 1958, the churches were firmly under the government's control. Christian leaders who refused to submit to the TSPM were publicly accused and sentenced to prison. At the Shanghai Conference in 1981, it was stated, to be anti-TSPM is to be anti-government, for religion must be organized and under control. It is evident that the government controls the TSPM and that the TSPM seeks to control all the churches in China. They designate what buildings can be used for church services, which pastors can preach, and what areas can be traveled to spread religion. The TSPM has recently called on the Public Security Bureau to close the meeting of the house churches, arrest the house church leaders, and arrest traveling evangelists. The clergy in the three South churches are all on the government payroll, and their salaries are much higher than the average wage earner in China." Unquote. I'm sure it would not come to any surprise that the head of the Religious Affairs Bureau is an atheist. Quote, those with ultimate power for controlling religion in China are atheists. They are required to be so by Communist Party regulations. State religious policy, as explained by Chinese President Jiang Zemin in the March 19th, 14th, 1996 edition of the People's Daily is to actively guide religion so that it can be adapted to socialist society, unquote. The Patriotic Cov uh, Covenant. Since the TSPM controlled churches have several limitations and restrictions, many true Christians realize they are unable to fulfill the Great Commission of Mark 16.15 to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Some of the prohibitions for Christians in the Patriotic Covenant include 1. 
a prohibition on evangelizing and baptizing children under 18. 2. A prohibition on church activities that conflict with work. 3. A prohibition on listening to foreign radio broadcasts. 4. A prohibition on receiving literature from abroad. 5. A prohibition on unauthorized contact with foreigners. 6. A prohibition on construction of churches. And 7. A prohibition on criticism of the government. Moreover, the TSPM Church must agree to uphold and promote the teachings of Marxism, unquote. The churches are also forbidden to preach from the Book of Revelation. Furthermore, there are a number of unwritten instructions which the Three Self Patriotic Movement gave to pastors and Fuso. They are forbidden to preach on the return of Christ, the suffering of Christ, casting out of demons, healing the sick, or love not the world. Other taboo topics are abortion and the marriage between unbelievers and believers. Another report tells of other restrictions upon the Christian believers in another village. Quote, Four of the rules that are that believers can only read Bibles and books printed by the Three Self Patriotic Movement, TSPM. Any other books must be turned in to the authorities. Believers may not have contact with inerrant preachers who are not a part of the TSPM. House meetings are forbidden, and those under 18 years old are not allowed to attend religious meetings. Yet another report states, quote, Privately published books and Bibles, mimographed, by house church leaders have been confiscated by local authorities and used in court as evidence of producing and distributing anti-revolutionary materials." Unquote. Many times when the Christians violate or do not espouse these prohibitions, the TSPM reports them to the Public Security Bureau. The question frequently asked by many is, why don't Chinese house church Christians register with the state-controlled Three Self Patriotic Movement, TSPM, and thus end all the government's persecution? After all, wouldn't registering with the state offer a legal, and adv a legal advantage that would permit believers to enjoy freedom of religion? First, registration with the Chinese government most certainly will not end the persecution of the church, which has already been clearly evident. Estimated to number about 70 million house church believers throughout China have since long distrusted the pastors of the TSPM churches. Since the early 1950s, many pastors were arrested and imprisoned because of the betrayal of the TSPM pastors who had served as informants for the government in repeated efforts by the government to oppress and control the church. Certainly not all TSPM pastors are traitors or government agents. In fact, some TSPM pastors chair a close relationship with the pastors of house churches. Nevertheless, the general attitude remains the same and betrayal continues to occur." Unquote. According to a 1994 report, some house churches in the cities of Fuzhou and Shanghai did register with the Three Self Patriotic Movement. Did the persecution stop? No. The house churches were ordered to stop their meetings. According to information received by the center from a recent traveler in these two cities, TSPM officials sent notices to house church leaders that their people must attend the open churches in those cities. In Fuso, a notice was received in mid-March that registered meeting points in the city must close. Only meetings with less than five persons would be permitted. These orders, in effect, apply to the 20 to 30 registered house churches in Fuso, as well as the eight registered groups, since all meetings would be restricted to five persons. Fuso has only two open churches. Unquote. Bible is anti-revolutionary material. 
As mentioned, the only literature that Christians are permitted to read is to be printed by the TSPM, to have legally printed materials available, and to solicit funds from Christians around the world. The Amity Foundation, which established the Amity Press in 1985, was founded by Bishop K. Ting, uh, K. H. Ting, and his associate Han Winzo, also spelled Winso. The Amity Press is licensed by the Chinese Christian Council (CCC), which was also headed by Bishop Ting until recently. Ting is now the honorary chairman of the CCC. Are you getting the picture? Ting heads the China Christian Council, who, which licenses the Amity Press, headed by Ting, which publishes the material, the material for the TSPM, also headed by Ting. As already noted, Ting has had high praise for the communist butcher Mao Tiz Tung. Although Ting has recently retired, the Chinese Council Church is now headed by Hans Winzo, who helped Ting found the Amity Press, and who had been the vice president under Ting. Both Ting and Winzo are communists as well as promoters of China's pro-abortion one-child policy. The CCC has also been accepted as a full member of the World Council of Churches as of 1991. Also mentioned, Ting attended the Union Theological Seminary from 1947 to 1949. He repudiates the fundamentals of the Christian faith, denies that the Bible is the inspired word of God, rejects the physical resurrection of Christ, and is a modernist. He does not believe that sinful humans will face judgment. He does believe, however, that we should see the Logos, Christ, who is the Word in John 1.1, 1, 1, in everyone. He also praises liberation theology. Ting leans, or leans towards universalism and thinks that there is light in all religion. He does not think that non-believers will go to hell. Ting was also the president of the China Christian Council's Najing Seminary and turned it into a hotbed of theological heresy. Quote, studies at the modernistic Najing Seminary are preimitated, are preimitated, no, preimitated, preempted with Marxist philosophy. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, pardon me. I had to yell at them. They include classes in socialism and international communism. A Western observer who visited the Union Seminary and interacted with students reports that the course on the history of Christianity in China vilified all major Protestant missionaries. A apart from the regular courses, occasional courses on Jews and Chinese history in which Jews were attacked as capulous, etc., theological abstracts and evolution of theology in China, rethinking theology to fit Marxist philosophy, were also offered, as were courses on comparative religious studies in China, government, religious policy, and questions most commonly asked by foreign visitors. Public relations training enabling students to correctly answer those from outside China, unquote. One of the conditions for entry into this seminary is political awareness, which refers to submission to communist dogma. A person who visited the seminary said that, quote, their curriculum included a class on the TSPM, its history and philosophy, and a class on patriotism, the teachings of Mayo, unquote. Ev evangelicals also report that the TSPM is, re is reasserting its own brand of theology within China seminaries, a mixture of Marxism, New Age ideals, and biblical teachings, unquote. 
Additionally, quote, Bishop Ting of Red China has been in ecumenical waters on behalf of the communists of Red China as far back as 1955. He attended the meeting of the WCC's Executive Committee in Communist Hungary just before the uprising there and has his picture on the front page of the WCC's official organ, The Outlook. He has backed the communists all through these years. He is a member of one of their governing bodies, the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. When the communists established China's Council of Churches, he was placed in full charge. He is a communist, a thorough-going Marxist, using the cover of Christianity for his deception. In 1956, Ting informed the Central Committee of the WCC, quote, before which he appeared by invitation that Chinese Christians did not regard the rising of the People's Republic as an act of God's wrath, but of love. He said they would not wish to end the new regime if they could. Christians in China did not pretend to agree with communists in their views on religion, he declared, but this did not prevent their recognizing the value of good things the People's Government was doing. They were humbled and gave thanks to God for their improved circumstances, unquote. Why a full-color printing press? Now, why would communists like Winzo and Ting want to print Bibles and Christian literature? One author states, Many Lutherans and Christians around the world are to be commended and thanked for their desire to replace the billions of Bibles destroyed by Mao's red guards. The only weak link in this chain was that the same people who had destroyed those 10 million Bibles, the communists, were now in charge of the Bible production to replace those Bibles that they had destroyed. Ting worked with the communists who destroyed 10 million Bibles. Ting worked with the communist security police in helping them to raid churches and arrest and jail pastors and their members, and in one case murdered a member. So the answer to why the communists want to print Bibles is simple but twofold. Christians want to help their fellow Christians, especially those in communist countries such as China. When we hear of an opportunity to get Bibles to believers who do not have Bibles, many Christians are more than willing to open their hearts and their purses to provide money to purchase the Bibles. This then becomes a fundraiser for the communists. By playing on our sympathy and our desire to distribute the gospel to as many as possible, the communists are able to get money that should be used for the work of Christ and divert it into their own coffers to print communistic literature. You see, the Amity Printing Press wants a full-color press and has solicited money for this purpose. There is a catch, however. The Bible only needs to be printed in black and white. About, but nine, oh, let's see, I'm sorry, let me go back. The Bible only needs to be printed in black and white, but about 95% of the communistic literature requires color. Therefore, the need for a color press, not for Bibles, as is often advertised, but for communistic literature. Ting admitted that $6.7 million press, which was supplied by the United Bible Societies, would not be used exclusively for Bibles. Quote, in a letter to Hong Kong Christian Weekly, dated April 1986 and released the following May, the Amity Foundation gave the following clarifications. The press will be jointly run by the Amity Foundation and the Neijing Teachers University. It will, be, it will undertake all kinds of printing projects, not limited to Bibles. If the churches inside or outside of China commission contract to print Bibles, the press will do its best to give priority to this project. The churches have to pay for the services in order to maintain the self-supporting principle. The quantity of the Bibles printed is to be decided by the commissioning contract party in the press. It is not to be decided by the United Bible Societies. What is the reality of this situation here? China will have a $6.7 million printing press on which hopefully Bibles will be printed. However, there is no formal guarantee that a single Bible will be printed on the Neijing press. Bibles for export. 
Of course, there are some Bibles being printed on this press. However, most of the Bibles that are actually printed here are in the English, not Chinese language, and are for export. So the communist government is making money by collecting for the press as well as making money selling the Bibles to other English-speaking countries. But the Chinese people, for the most part, are not getting these Bibles. Moreover, when a Chinese Christian does get a Bible, the cost is exorbitant for the average worker. The born-again Christian <clears throat> are 85% rural, country, or farmers where their entire year's income would pay for only one of the Bibles on sale at the government-sponsored registered church. If generous people were supplying the press plus the money to print the Bibles, wouldn't you think the Bibles could be given away for free or at least sold at a reasonable price? Not only is communistic literature being printed on this press, but there is a second, even more sinister reason why the communists are printing Bibles. When a Chinese house church Christian orders a Bible, he must register his name, address, church affiliation, and other Christian history. Many Chinese Christians refer to these Bibles as the Dulo Hibi, or Poison Snake Bibles. Why? Because the Bibles are being used as bait. And when a person tries to purchase a legal Bible, he is often arrested since the government now has obtained the person's name and church affiliation. The government knows that a Bible is precious to a Christian. Therefore, the communists offer something of a value in order to entrap the Christians and make them pay money on top of it. Here is one example of what took place in China. A little country church ordered and paid for 500 of these Bibles to be sent to them over a thousand miles away. They paid for them in advance. The 500 Bibles came to their designated railroad station. When the Christians went to pick them up, they were all arrested and put in jail. Does this sound safe? Yet an ad for Ned Graham's East Gates International appeared in October 26, 1999, issue of Christianity Today, with Billy Graham saying, quote, These Bibles are hardbound and printed legally in China. Because these Bibles are printed and distributed legally, there is not the associated risk to the Chinese believers as with smuggled Bibles. Unquote. Really? If there are no risk, then why are so many believers arrested after purchasing a legal Bible? <sighs> Pastor Lee Dexon, a house church leader in China, has been arrested so many times in the past two years that he lost his count. He said that the Public Security Bureau, PSB officials, stormed into a house church meeting confiscated hymnals and Bibles, and prevented the service from continuing. They confiscated and destroyed the Bibles that we had legally purchased from the government, said Lee. Last year, PSB officials also confiscated Lee's church and welded the doors shut. In early November, in the city of Wenzhou, uh, I, Zijing, province, they reportedly blew up and demolished at least 450 churches, temples, and shrines. Government officials said religious leaders had built the churches and temples illegally. Obviously, then, even the legal Bibles are not safe from confiscation in China. One person writes, quote, the head of a famous worldwide church group in Hong Kong told me that he and other Chinese pastors went to visit Ting. He said, Bishop Ting, I have friends who have had been able to get a Bible in three years, who have not been able to get a Bible in three years. Can we not send Bibles from Hong Kong? Bishop Ting replied, no, but you can send the cash, unquote. Even though Ting and Wenzhou Han do not want Christianity to flourish in China. They are both very receptive to the idea of the united religions, which will be covered in chapter 6. 
Now, after all that was said about Bishop Ting, his communistic ties, his pro-abortion stance, his praise of Myotis Tung, and his printing press that is used to arrest Christians, would you believe that a favorable article appeared in Graham's Christianity Today, September 6, 1985? and the Chinese edition of his Decision magazine, December 1985. The article was written by Tom Gooseman and Edward E. Plowman and seemed to present Ting's self, the three self-patriotic movement as an evangelistic, no, evangelical, I'm sorry, organization. In referring to a conference held at Najing in the early 1980s, the authors quoted from Workner, Berkeley, who said he sensed a strong evangelical spirit among all those who attended. They came across as men and women without guile. My prejudice softened after meeting Ting. I was overwhelmed by his humility, his spirit, and by his spiritual insight. In this short article, Berkeley's name was mentioned four times. It just happens to be the executive director of the 1986 Amsterdam Conference of Inerrant Evangelists sponsored by the Billy Graham Evangel Evangelistic Association. Quote, Most unfortunately, Berkeley and Sam Wogelmuth, president emeritus of Youth for Christ, drafted a 11-point statement addressed to believers outside of China it called on Christians not to criticize the church in China, TSPM. It exhorted Christian broadcasters to pay attention to, TSPM, Christian leaders, and it urged evangelicals to cooperate with, TSPM, unquote. The article went on to say that there was a strong support among church leaders for a preaching visit by evangelist Billy Graham. It seems that this story was written in order to soften the Americans' criticism of Billy Graham's soon-to-come visit to China in the 1980s. Wow. A man of peace. Let's see how long I got. Okay. A man of peace. Now, let's see how Billy Graham himself feels about Ting. In Graham's autobiography, Just As I Am, he brags, Quote, in 1985, a preliminary, preliminary invitation had arrived from Bishop K.H. Ting, head of the China Christian Council, whom Ruth had met during her visit in 1980 trip. After a series of negotiations, a firm invitation arrived, asking us to preach in churches in several cities in September of 1987. I promised to give the invitation priority, pending further research into the details of the invitation. Our formal invitation, as I said, came from the China Christian Council, which was officially recognized by the government and also was affiliated with what was known as the Three Self-Patriotic Movement. We were giving a red carpet welcome at the airport by our two official hosts, Ambassador Zhang Wenjin and Bishop K.H. Ting, president of the China Council, Christian Council. Ambassador Zheng was president of the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries, a title that did not begin to describe his courtesy and helpfulness. He was also often described as Mr. Integrity and was among those who had negotiated with Henry Kissinger in confidential, in confidential talks some years before. The association's vice president, Lu Jigin, whom Ruth had met in 1980, was also there. In addition to Bishop Ting, the China Christian Council was represented by its vice president, Han Winzo. American Ambassador Winston Lord was on hand, too, to remind us that we were not out of touch with home. I sat at a huge table with Ambassador Zhang amid other distinguished officials, including Bishop Ting, Zio Puku of China's Buddhist Association, and Ambassador Lord. In the introductory remarks, Ruth was called a daughter of China and I 
a man of peace. Before moving on, a few comments are in order. Han Winzo was there. We've covered a little bit about Winzo previously. He is a communist who has now replaced Ting as head of the China Christian Council and also helped Ting found the Amity Press. When Graham met with the officials, he explained that the Christians were good citizens, illustrating with Romans 13 that the Bible instructed Christians to obey authorities. It is true that Christians are to obey the authorities, but when those in leadership demand a Christian to do something against God's will, our first obligation is to obey God. The apostles were jailed for preaching, but an angel opened the prison doors and told them to preach in the temple. This is from the Bible. Then came one and told them, the priest, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And when they had brought them, the apostles, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Acts chapter 5, verse 25, verse 27 through 29. In communist countries, many Christians are disobeying the authorities just by attending a worship service. But Graham seemed to give the communistic officials the impression that Christians he would speak to would obey the government rather than God. Graham admitted in his autobiography that the China Christian Council, CCC, was affiliated with the Three Self-Patriotic Movement and that the CCC was officially recognized by the government. In other words, he was entering into this proposition ignorantly. He was fully he was not entering into this proposition ignorantly. He was fully aware of the problem between the house churches and the government. He even wrote, on the other hand, millions of Christian Chinese worshipped either as single family units or in so called house churches meeting as regularly as possible. These group of believers were sometimes referred to as meeting point Christians. Many of the churches were not affiliated with the official sanctioned three self-patriotic movement. In many instances, they rejected the leadership of that body and its churches because of their ties to the government. Unquote. And I'm going to end that there because next time we're jumping into the skull and crossbones and Bilderbergs. And so I'm going to end chapter 5, part 1, I guess we want to say, there. And then I will pick it up next time, brothers and sisters. I hope I did not sound too loud this time. I'm trying to lower my tone. Um, I had made a remark on one of the videos that I had been doing, one of the readings that I found out just recently. I think it was last week. That I speak very loud. And that's because my hearing is going so bad. Back in 2016, I was diagnosed by the ear, throat, and nose doctor there that um, I lost 65% in my left ear of hearing. Um, hearing aid will not help. They actually do not know what happened to my hearing. I woke up one morning and uh, couldn't hear. I have no idea. At first, they thought it was water behind the ear and all this other stuff. They'd done exams. I actually had surgery, and they investigated, and they have no explanation on why I've lost my hearing in that ear. And like I said, it was 65% gone in 2016, and as I age <laughs> and as time goes on, it has gotten worse. And so I guess I yell when I talk now, and so I'm trying my best to lower my tone a little bit, so I don't sound, you know, like a loud, crazy person or something. <laughs> anyway, I love you all so very, very much. Um, you know, go to the Lord in prayer over this. And always keep your eyes on Jesus and your nose in the book, which is the Word of God. And embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your hearts so you will not sin against God or be deceived. Until next time, brothers and sisters, be blessed always. I love you all.